Hello everyone, welcome back. Oh, I am so happy and excited. We are together again. It's it's glorious. God is so good. He gave us one more day. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so yes, I have lots <laughs> to share with you. Um, but So let's get right to it. Uh, I don't want to take a lot of your time, so let's get right to it. Okay, I'm so excited about this message. And it was so subtle. Our God is subtle, like a whisper in a breeze. And you have to steady yourself and pray and hear him. It's amazing. Okay, you're seeing the word crescendo. I was given last Sunday the word crescendo. And I thought, okay, Lord, um, all right, we're traveling around the globe again. <laughs> crescendo has an Italian um, reference or meaning, um, you know, word. It's an Italian word, crescendo. And it's in reference to, like, music. And here is the brief description. So I got excited. I said, okay, crescendo. Wow, this sounds exciting. It's the, the gradual increase. And I thought, yeah, our walk. It's gradual. Some run, yes. But most of us are walking. We always say we have a walk with God. Our walk. And, and I thought, okay, that's beautiful. It's been a buildup. And maybe we're at the climax. And I thought, all right, this is exciting. And I thought, maybe this is a musical reference. And I was thinking, okay, maybe he's, he's going more musical this time. And I need to look at, at, at orchestras or, or that idea. And I thought, okay, that, that could be an interesting reference between how it's a band and they're, they, they have their music, which could be like their walk. And each instrument has its own um, reference to the music, some piano, some... Um, guitar, you know, whatever their instrument might be, clarinet, and they wait for the maestro to lead them. So I thought, oh, I wonder if that's what he's going, but I, I didn't, it didn't feel like that was the right way to go. And I kept referencing back to, in my mind, I kept referencing back to um, the mise en place, French, and um, the Egyptian hieroglyphic symbol. So I started looking up like France and Egypt and Rome. And I found beautiful images. And I was like, okay, this is, you know, it's exciting. I'm, I'm seeing all these beautiful places and these beautiful countries that I've never been to. Um, but I'm still trying to get the message. So I'm wondering, you know, Lord, why am I um, seeing these places of France and Egypt? and Rome, you know, what are you trying to, to, to show me? And I'm, you know, so I thought, let me look at these images and see if maybe I can get an idea of what the Lord is trying to tell me. But literally, I'm not getting anything. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to pray on it. So I sat over it and I said, Lord, I, I understand that you have something you're trying to show me. And then it got to me. He's not speaking about modern times because it's by it's biblical right it's biblical it's the bible and then i realized the bible the time period they wrote this this beautiful message from the lord thousands of years ago they didn't know about our times today and if they did these were prophecies they were speaking in terms and in dialect of their time. So I went to Egypt in biblical times and I found the Exodus, Moses. And I'm like, oh, that's it's he's talking about, of course, he's talking about the Bible. And each one of these places have a significant um, um, thing that happened to them in biblical times. Like here in France, I didn't know. 
but they speak on the terms of it's beautiful um they're supposed to be um uh, a chance that the 10 tribes um the 10 lost tribes ended up in france um and also the and it says it i forget i'll, I'll find the the verse but it says like the um the lost children will be found and i found that there there was something that happened that led people from Jerusalem to France. There is a beautiful history of Christianity in France. And and I think this needs to be told. Maybe that's that's what I was being led to, one of many things. Okay, so what I found was after Jesus was sacrificed in Jerusalem, he was crucified. His followers, many of them, were either exiled or banished or um, treated awfully after Christ was gone. And some of them were literally put in a boat and set adrift. They were the oars were taken out, the sails were removed. And they were just left to their own devices in this water. How awful, how sad, right? Uh, but where, what was beautiful is God was with them. God never left them. Jesus didn't leave them. He just had some things to do, right? Um, they ended up in France. And France took them in. It's beautiful. And a lot of them started over in France. Some moved on. Like, um, I think it was Mary's father. He was also exiled, but he moved on. I think he went to Canada or um, um, possibly England, one of the two. But yes, it's just, it's just a fascinating story that I didn't know. The early Christians that were, once Jesus was gone, ended up in France. Mise en place, put into place, maybe, right? So then that brought me back to Egypt, where I saw the hieroglyphics. And I found in ancient Egypt, thousands of years before Christ, was the Exodus, and that was Moses. And Moses took the people from the Pharaoh. Once all the plagues and everything were laid upon them because he wouldn't let his people go. God's people needed to be released. The Jews needed to go. And Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. So Moses had to get them out of there. And that was the other message I got was Egypt. I saw these hieroglyphics um, in a vision that I saw. And I also found out something else amazing about Egypt. At one time, in ancient Egypt, the span of its reign reigned over Jerusalem. Isn't that amazing? I, like I said, it's just been, it's just been so much anyway. So yes, so at one point, Egypt was reigning over Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is where Christ was crucified. So there's a connection there. And if there's more, if you have more, I just got something in my mind. Someone has more information about this right now as I'm saying this to you and you're hearing it. I'm getting confirmation by a um, deja vu. Um, I'm getting it right now. Isn't it amazing? I'm getting it right now. Someone out there has information. Please put that in the comments. The Lord is, is speaking to me at this moment. But yes there is a connection praise god thank you um there's a connection between egypt 
And 2,000 years later, um, the birth of Christ was, um, I believe, but it, there was a connection there that I didn't know, and there's more. And then I got crescendo, Italian word, which brought me to Italy, which brings me to Rome. And we all know there's a lot of ancient history with Christians and the people of Rome. But I didn't, that's not where I was going, and I knew that. I knew that that's not where I was going. But I knew that there was more. This is a name. Maybe some of you know, maybe some of you don't know. But this is the name of the man who sent Jesus to his crucifixion. And he, his name will always be in connection with Jesus Christ. Um, but there was more I found out about him, which I believe is beautiful. But before I go to more about him, he was an overseer over Jerusalem. He was a Roman who was over the province of Judea over Jerusalem. So the con the the Italian the connection was his action crucified Christ and in ancient times in Egypt the Roman I mean the, the Egyptians were taken out of Egypt that also was a part of Jerusalem where thousands of years later the Son of God was going to be sacrificed it's all it was like this huge connection it was just this amazing connection and then France took the people that were exiled and and um, you know abused by the people who were left over once um, Christ was gone so France Rome um, Egypt they have this trifecta um, connection that I've found and I know there's more and I'm sure there's some Bible I am not a biblical scholar <laughs> but there's more that I want to show um, that the Lord is showing I also want to show this about really quickly about Pontus now I know there's going to be people who are going to be upset with him we all were and we all should be because boy but it, we all have a role to play so we just have to pray but I don't know if you can see, but it says Pontius Pilate w washed his hands to show that he was not responsible for the execution of Jesus. I don't know if you've ever heard that um, saying, you wash your hands of this, that this is where it came from. He washed his hands saying he was not a part of it. So really history doesn't have it quite right yes he could have stopped it and he probably started it and he didn't but he is in history written down that he didn't believe that he was actually guilty of these treasonous crimes against Rome but he didn't stop it he chose not to stop it and maybe that was God's plan for him. We don't know. And we can't judge him for that. God has a plan for all of us. So I just thought I, I would share this with you that he even washed his hands of it and didn't believe that Jesus was guilty of anything. And he even had someone else um, confirm that with him, that he, they didn't believe that Jesus was guilty of these crimes. But it still happened. Jesus had to die. So our sins could be...
forgiven. Um, I just want to say this. It's a lot of information to take in, and I know I got a lot from one word, <laughs> crescendo. Um, but I believe that there's a message. Let's go to scripture. John 19, 28 through 30, in the New King James Version. It is finished. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel a full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on his high pulse. I saw, excuse me, I'm reading upside down. <laughs> I saw, and put it into his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished and bowed his head and he gave up his spirit so I think what I was given was well, it was beautiful um, but I was given crescendo Italian um, Mise en place, French, and the Egyptian hieroglyphics, um, which is their language. I don't know how to interpret it, but I'm sure there was a message in there. I didn't know what it said, though. Um, but all three of these nations in biblical times played a part to the ultimate sacrifice and for the salvation of the people who were put in those boats and set adrift. I'm sorry. <clears throat> sorry. They were set adrift for God knows what to happen, but that was it. God was. God did know. God was with them. He loves you, and I love you too. Sorry this message was long. <laughs>